Hey everybody, Mr. Barry here. Uh, we are talking about regression um, and being able to get a set of data, type it into Desmos, uh, and then use our different models and our different polynomials uh, in order to figure out uh, the best projection and maybe we can kind of um, statistically look at things here. It says, Gene hit a golf ball from the top of the hill. The height of a ball above the green is given in the table below. I have the table there already. A couple questions. What regression model is the best representation of the path? Use the model to estimate when the ball hits ground max height, uh, both the time and the actual location. So a very similar problem to what we've done before. Um, if you remember anything that we did when it comes to the quadratic units that we did for probably about two months or so, um, this, this problem sounds very familiar. Uh, I did go ahead and cheat a little bit, and I typed that table into Desmos already. Um, so you can see up here, I typed it into Desmos already. Uh, and even though I have my home screen right here, I can go over and push my zoom fit, and I will be able to see the uh, projection of the ball given the table. Um, so... I also cheated a little bit as in I typed out uh, a linear and quadratic a cubic uh, regression models here to see and test which ones are the best. So uh, remember, I can highlight things and bring it up on Desmos here uh, by just clicking on these circles here. So for instance, a linear regression model, if I highlight that right there. That's the linear regression model. It doesn't look like that line matches up with our dots very uh, very well. Um, you can see over here my R squared is 0 0.3642. All right, so I'm going to move on to other ones and see what I can get from those. Um, and something very interesting here happens. Um, so I'm going to take a look about the quadratic, the cubic, and the quartic all together, um, just so you can kind of understand. Now I'm typing these in the quadratic, the cubic model, and the quartic model. If you have a couple of these problems in a row, um, hi the highlighting part of this, where I can highlight certain ones on the graph, is a good way to go. So if you just type this up front when you're doing a bunch of these problems, and then just kind of let it on the screen as you go along, uh, that's a good idea. But you can take a look at the R squared, um, and you can see that something really interesting here happens. For the quadratic, I have... 0 0.999, I have the number one for a cubic, which means it's almost an exact match when it comes to um, checking out that probability uh, of things getting away from the mean. And the R squared here is 0 0.9998. So if you went with uh, either one of these three, you're going to be really, really accurate. Again, I'll highlight those. All right, now if you're reading the problem and you're thinking to yourself, man, that sounds like a quadratic. Again, I wouldn't be uh, marking you wrong if you went with the quadratic model. If you base it purely on R squared, remember we're looking for the number one that's going to be incredibly accurate, I would go with the cubic model. All right, um, either way, uh, I would understand on this problem that being a way that you go with. They're both pretty accurate. Um, I'm, for the argument's sake of this particular one, uh, going to go with the cubic because the R squared does beat it out very, very slightly. Um, and I'll have to type that in. And it will take me a while to type it in. Of course, if you're um, writing this out with a piece of paper, it's probably a lot easier. Negative 0.1. And I believe there were like four threes. No, there were five threes. I think we get the point at that point. And then it's x to the third power. I do recommend that if you have to type this out using something like this Equatio extension on Google. You got negative 8.87143. And be x squared. Forty-eight point two six one nine. 